This is a very important occasion today where the evidence base that we're learning in research has an opportunity to really get engaged with the cohorts, the people, the societies that it can eventually make an impact on. Do you know that on average, it takes 15 years for research findings, particularly in the clinical space, to translate into practice? So we are going to buck that trend. We're going to take the evidence that we've gleaned from the Irish Longitudinal Study on Aging, TILDA, and bring it right to the heart of the societies which, where it will make an impact, empowering people in Ireland to take responsibility and enabling them to take responsibility for their health and their well-being. I'll just explain a bit about what TILDA is so that you understand the framework. It's the largest adult study ever embarked on in Ireland. So we see, as Colin said, uh, we, we have participants, almost 10,000 participants, over the age of 50, 50 and above, who were randomly selected. So we literally called on randomly selected addresses, asked if anybody 50 or more was living in this house, and if so, would you take part in a study with us at least for the next 10 years, if not for longer? And now we're into 10 years and we're going forth with another phase of the study because the data we've gleaned from the study is so valuable that day and day it's informing policy in Ireland. So what sort of data do we collect? We collect health data, of course, hugely important, but also wealth data. We know the economics of people 50 and above in Ireland. We know the pressures during the last period of austerity, the opportunities, and well-being. What makes for a really good retirement? What makes for a really good aging process? So we, we see the same people every two years. They have a very detailed health assessment and also lots of questions about health, wealth, and happiness. And we understand then for someone who age 50, say, came into the study, we've been watching them for the last two years. And we know based on the information we collated when they came into the study first, and now they've had a stroke, or a bad retirement, or a period of bad depression, we can work back on the factors that were evident when they were 50, which determined that outcome. And therefore, what we can generate back in terms of information to society to say, you've got to avoid these things, or you've got to do these things in order to avoid these certain outcomes. So it's a hugely valuable data set, and that's the sort of process. And hats off to the participants. People in Ireland have really signed up to this. We had a wonderful response rate. We continue to have amazing participation in this study from these participants. And they are forming the fabric of policy in health, in economics, and in well-being in Ireland. So what do we know? I'll just share some of the, some of the stuff we know from our study, but also other studies, because we are one of 26 studies worldwide, including China, Brazil, and the Irish study has actually led the way for many of these studies because we were the first to introduce objective health measures into these sorts of studies. So we've had a very strong leadership role in terms of these uh, 26 studies. So what do we know? We know that purpose is really important as people get older. I was talking to Michal and Murray, actually, there's nobody in Ireland I know that you can say their first name, Michal, and we all know who we're talking about. So speaking to Michal this morning and, and listening to him and, 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 and his memory, his ability to recall, his physical stature, everything about him, and I'm not betraying any health secrets here, he is a, a wonderful example of successful aging. And then I'm thinking, why? And he has so many of the attributes that are important. The first is purpose. Continue to have a purpose in life. The second is strong family connections. Exercise, part of your day. Not going to the gym for an hour, driving there, driving home, and that's it. Making exercise part of your day. And in the communities, where a significant proportion live to 100 and beyond, and well, and physically well, and fit and healthy in 100 and beyond, the blue zones, exercise is part of their day, gardening, housework, walking everywhere to collect groceries, etc. Diet, low sugar, 
low salt, low refined grains. And the Japanese group who have this longevity have a lovely saying. Each day, something from the sea and something from the land. Downshift. Very important to have some relaxation. Again, all of these communities have, have, have some way, either through religion or social engagement, of downtiming, of relaxing, of de-stressing. But key to all of these, and almost acting as a bedrock for all of these important attributes of a successful aging, is belonging. Belonging to a society. Belonging to a community. And part of that very much is volunteering. In Ireland, one in five people over the age of 50 volunteer on a regular basis. And we know from the research that you're physically fitter, mentally fitter, and much happier if you regularly belong to a community um, institution and are engaged with that activity, and if you volunteer. And surely these are absolutely the message of the GAA, and particularly health and well-being within the GAA. So everything we're discovering chimes so wonderfully with this long-standing national institution. And it's a wonderful privilege for us, therefore, to couple with them, to translate the evidence as rapidly as possible so that people understand what they can do for their own lives, but so that we as societies and governments also can understand how we can recreate societies that are age-friendly and will enhance well-being. Because you know, if you get it right for people as they get older in Ireland, you get it right for society as a whole. I'll give you an example of that. We found that a proportion, almost 25% of people over the age of 80, weren't able to walk fast enough to cross the road, gauging the timing of signals, road signals, in the Dublin area. So we worked with the Dublin City Council. We were able to say to them, if you can extend the timing of the lighting by two seconds, X proportion of people over that age will be able to cross the road. And they did this. And it has had a very positive knock-on effect at a societal level. That's a huge thing. Nobody even noticed that it was a bit slower. And, it's, and it's, yet, it's enabled people to get out and not be fearful of crossing the road if they to do their own shopping, etc. But it's also had a positive effect on women with buggies and a couple of kids hanging out of them when they go to collect them from school, on the disabled, etc. So getting it right for people as they get older in Ireland gets it right for society in Ireland. Purpose, belonging, family, relationships, exercise, relaxation. What a great message. And what an easy message for government to actually support financially. None of those things are very cost effective. And doing them add another seven years of healthy life to your life. So um, one of the other things that we hope to engage with the uh, GAA on is ageism, a negative attitude towards aging. Now, you might say, is this common? It's incredibly common. Um, the, uh, uh, we, we don't see it in this organization because, as Colin has said, the bedrock of the volunteerism in this organization is the older players, very often, and their families. But to work towards ageism is very important. And again, the statistic there is really interesting. And we've shown it in Tilda. If you have experienced ageism in any way, even as a kid growing up, you see yourself as your chronological age. Chronological age is a number. I'm 75. I feel 45. And that was so, I assure you, of the ambassadors we're engaging with from this morning. I feel 45. Well, the person who feels 45 is actually physically fitter four years after that declaration and mentally fitter four years after that declaration than the person who at 75 says, I feel 75. Ageism plays a big role in that attitude that you yourself have to aging because you're, you're actually hugely influenced by external um, opinions about aging. So, final message, quality of life gets better as people get older. It's, it gets better over the age of 50. It peaks at 78, and that's an average. It actually continues to get better 
for many beyond 78. And the factors that influence quality of life are disability and illness. So anything we can do to stave off disability, to stave off illness, will improve quality of life further. Our message is for all ages. We were talking this morning about muscle weakness, sarcopenia, a diagnosis of loss of muscle cells, and it starts at 40. And we lose 1% of muscle mass year on year after the age of 40. And what we can do about that in the context of replenishment with protein and resistance exercises. So this applies to all age groups within the GAA and within society. That's who this message is for. And we hope that with this road tour, uh, informing people of the evidence base from these studies, that we will have participants across the age span because the GAA is across the age span and our study is about the life course across the age span. In order to enable this, I also want to acknowledge the first philanthropic gift we gave to, to, in, to start this study, and we were received rather, and that was from Irish Life. We went to Irish Life, we, we gave a talk like I've given to you now saying it's really important to have this representative data so we can have evidence in order to better inform policy in these areas in Ireland. And Irish Life were the first to come up with a philanthropic support for the study. This leveraged very rich philanthropic support also from Atlantic Philanthropies. And I want to acknowledge their wonderful founder and champion, of course, Chuck Feeney, who's been a great supporter to Ireland and to Irish research. And then finally, the Department of Health, who have been a great partner and continue to partner uh, with TILDA and are continuing to, to fund the study. Gunamila Mahagat on Uktaran, John Horn, Colin Reagan, Seamus Hogan, and the team at GAA Community for their enthusiasm and passion to, 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 to enable this uh, initiative. And it's, I'm dying to work with the ambassadors you've chosen because all of them, even Claire Regan, is a great example of successful aging. Thank you.